welcome to erpwebtutor.com. This is Aurideep. And in the previous videos for the payroll module, we have explained the various uh, configuration steps. So this series of videos, we will explain the different payroll processes that you actually need to perform in order to run the payroll. So uh, we will start the presentation with uh, explaining the different steps and then we will have the actual hands-on videos where we will run each and every step. Uh, just keep in mind that we will be using the configurations that we have made during our configuration videos. So please do take a look at uh, the payroll configurations uh, setup videos on our website uh, before you actually try to uh, execute this payroll processing steps. So let's move on. So. We had enough of setups, now we need to see some numbers. So let's see how the payrolls and uh, uh, run and how our setups that we have done, how they behave when we actually process the payroll. Now, in order to understand uh, the payroll processing, we need to keep in mind that it's not a simple just one process. There are multiple steps involved and we will cover each and every step and uh, giving you a background of what each and every step means and what they do would help you uh, when I actually uh, show you the payroll processing live, uh, actually you know running a payroll and uh, all the necessary steps that follow the payroll run. So these are the steps that we need to follow. The first thing is the payroll run. We will uh, give you a brief uh, synopsis of what each step means and what they do. And of course, uh, in the actual live uh, videos, you will see uh, all the steps being executed uh, in front of you live. So the first step is the payroll run. The next thing is the prepayments. The next step the payroll archive. The next two steps are at the same time. So we have the NACHA and the check writer XML. So if you want to use direct deposit, uh, you're going to use the NACHA. And if you want to write checks, you're going to write the check, you're going to run the check writer. And if you have a combination of the two, you're going to run both of them. And then we have the direct deposit. So that is going to be run. Uh, actually, the check writer and the direct deposit, you know, like uh, the NACHA needs to run. And then uh, the check writer and the direct deposit could be run in either order. So it's not dependent on the other. The next thing is costing. Uh, we will. Uh, create a detailed uh, video on what costing is in, 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 in terms of Oracle Payroll and what configurations are involved and we will uh, give you uh, some more details on the costing. The purpose of this demonstration is not to get too much details into costing because it's, it's, a, it's a whole new world. So uh, there are a lot of details to be understood as a part of costing. Uh, but we uh, for the purpose of this demo, we will try to keep uh, it as minimal as possible because we will try to show you each and every process run. So let's move on. The next thing is we have something called a costing details report. Now this is a report. This is not a, a payroll process. That's why I have mentioned it as optional. It's a good thing to run to see what the costing uh, breakdown has uh, provided. So this is a report. And then the, the last step is the transfer to GL. And of course, you can run the payroll register report. This is, again, an optional report that you could run. Um, I, there is no specific order for the payroll register report. Normally, uh, people run it after the transfer. They, you can run it even before transfer to GL. Uh, you can pretty much run it any time after you have the payroll run. So uh, this is just a usual practice. This is just the flow of the run and the, uh, the processes and the report runs. So this is what I came up with. 
but like I said, you know, you can run the payroll register even be before transferring to GL anytime after the payroll run is complete. Now, let's talk about the processes. So we know that what are the processes that are involved in the payroll run. So we will just talk at a very high level about each and every process and what is the role of that process in the whole payroll processing cycle. So the first thing, like I said, is the payroll run. So this is done through a seeded concurrent program. The name of the program is a payroll run or payroll process. This will process the payroll. And we can always check the, the concurrent program to see if we have any errors in the log file. The log file is nothing but uh, when you click on the output or the when the concurrent program ends, you can there's something uh, that will generate a log file. So this is this doesn't give you any numbers. Uh, what you need to do is you need to run the payroll, the process, and that actually you know takes uh, the, the all kinds of uh, numbers into calculation and it derives uh, the actual uh, the net amount that an employee is going to receive. It looks into the various deductions and pretty much uh, processes all the numbers that you can imagine. So this is uh, this is the main uh, process in our payroll run and this is the first step that we need to perform. The next step is called the prepayments. This is a mandatory process uh, this process looks into the amounts processed for each of the employees and their respective payment methods. Uh, it then divides the money to be paid onto their payment methods. So, for example, uh, we have Joe who is making $2,000 a month and he has preferred two preferred methods. So, what he wants is he wants 20% of that net payment uh, as a check and the rest of the money to be deposited in a bank account. So what uh, the prepayment process will do, it will take that 2000 uh, that has to be paid to Joe and breaks it down into two components. One is a $1,600 that will go into his bank account as a direct deposit and he will also receive a check of $400. Now to run the process, we just need to go to a single request and put the process name as prepayments. We will uh, explain the parameters that we need to pass when we run the program, but that again, uh, we will show it when we uh, actually run the, the processes live. So let's move on. We have the next step, which is the payroll archive. This is uh, done through a seeded concurrent program again. In the name of the program is payroll archive. Uh, this process, what it does, it, it populates the data in the payroll archive table. And it also enables the check writer and the direct deposit advice process to pick the data from the archive table to be displayed on the SOE or the statement of earnings. So when you run your check writer or the direct deposit, uh, it is run usually in an archive mode. And that is one of the hidden parameters that Oracle uses. So you don't have a choice when you run the, the check deposit or the direct deposit, uh, the check writer or the direct deposit concurrent program. So you run those and in order for the check writer or the direct deposit to fetch the data from the archive table and display it on the check or on the, the direct deposit advice, uh, you need to run the payroll archive so that it can populate the data in those table where these uh, check writer and direct deposit is looking for data. So that's payroll archive for us. Let's moving on to the next step, which is the NACHA. Now this is the process for direct deposits. Uh, UK localization supports the BSES and the North American localization support NACHA. So it's the North American Clearing House. Uh, uh, similarly, you know, different locations follow different uh, payment gateway. So what we do is, you know, the, the company processes the payroll. Now, Mr. Joe is going to get that money into his bank account. So somebody needs to work as a gateway so that this money is coming from this XYZ company 
and is getting distributed to its different employees and it's getting deposited in their bank. So uh, we, we normally use, uh, in, in the North American localizations, we normally use NACHA as a clearinghouse to make uh, this direct deposit. So what this does, it, this process generates an output file that could be sent to the bank and the treasury. So based on that, uh, the numbers, it has all kinds of information. Again, we will, we will run the NACHA and we will see how the output looks like. It has uh, the bank information for the employee and how much money is going to be deposited. So once the process is run, we can actually select that output of the process and verify the details. So, so once it is run, uh, uh, we can. This is one of the processes, one of the few payroll processes. Uh, unlike the actual payroll or the prepayment, this actually generates an output, which could be sent directly to the bank. And you can also uh, open that output file and verify the information in there. So, we can then send that output report to the bank via established preferred electronic media. So if you have uh, an established uh, uh, network with uh, with the bank, you can just upload that file into the bank server and then the bank will uh, read the information in that file and process uh, that information so that the employees get paid. Moving on to the next step is the direct deposit. The direct deposit advice actually prints the pay slips that we might send to the employees. Uh, this process goes through the statement of earnings and gets us the details of the earnings and deductions in a more understandable format as a report. So a deposit advice is nothing but, you know, when you get paid, every paycheck you receive something uh, that is called the statement of earnings. There you will see how much is your gross pay, how much, um, taxes you have paid, if you have any 401k or um, any other uh, contribution, pre-tax, post-tax, you will see all those details on your pay stub. So this is pretty much your pay stub. And of course, since uh, this is not a real check, uh, what uh, the way you can do is, you know, you can just uh, uh, create a non-negotiable uh, fake check at the end of the direct deposit. Uh, we do have a video on how to customize uh, the seeded layout. This is also, again, a, a, a report that uh, gets generated. It's, it's a PDF file that gets generated, and it goes to the printer directly. And the way it uh, does, it's uh, quite similar to the check. It just prints that deposit onto that, um, the paper that you uh, feed to your printer to print checks or direct deposit. So that is uh, something uh, a lot of companies use that uh, technology. They run the direct deposit and they print those and those are usually mailed out to the employees. Now, uh, like I said, yes, uh, there's a default template in which this direct deposit gets printed. And this is uh, uh, if you have expertise on XML publisher, uh, you can always customize uh, the layout and the way and the information that gets printed on the, the direct deposit and you can uh, meet your client's requirement. The next step is the check writer XML. So if we have check as one of the valid payment methods, then we need to write the checks to get them out to the employees. Uh, to do so, we will run the process called the check writer. So now what we normally use is the check writer XML. So we must have the printer in place uh, with the check leaf book attached. So it's not just printed on ordinary papers. It needs a special paper for printing checks. So that is something usually handled by the payroll department and they usually know how to, you know, uh, set up the printer so that it can print the check stub. It can also print the, the micro line properly. So those are, those are special configurations uh, that has to be done on the printer side and also special uh, check stocks or, or the paper that's going to be used for printing the checks. Now, uh, here we must have a start check number with us. So we need to know that what is the, because it might print uh, the checks for multiple employees. 
So we need to specify the start number of the check. And we can get that from the printer as well. And all we need is the number of the first check, which is going to be printed. Now, uh, so that's the, the check writer process. And moving on, we have the next step, which is costing. Uh, as a part of this process, the payroll engine divides the costs according to the cost allocation flex field. Now, that's again a key flex field that is used in Oracle HCM. And when you have payroll, this is usually mapped with your GL uh, flex field structure. And that information, uh, when we run the costing process, uh, it actually creates, uh, the, divides the cost uh, as per the costing configuration that you can do at a different level. So, uh, like I said, you know, this is a huge subject, so I will not spend too much time uh, to explain what is costing, how it's done, is a part of this uh, video. Uh, we will have a separate tutorial for that. So for now, this is, this is all the information that you would need. Uh, this process assures that the cost paid for labor is accurately being captured. And if no costing information is found on any particular entry, the cost goes to the suspense account. Now, again, uh, you would normally have your costing defined at different levels. Uh, you could have it at the link, um, the element, payroll, um, assignment, uh, element entries. So those are the different levels that you can have. And like I said, if the, the costing process does not find a, a the costing information at any of these levels, it normally that cost goes into the suspense account. So the last step, which is the transfer to GL. So this is the last process that uh, uh, the payroll person would be doing. So uh, this is taking care of the migration of the cost to the general ledger. So the payroll costs are migrated to the general ledger and then it gets uh, added against the actual financial accounts. So the finance actually maintains those accounts. And in the payroll, when you create the, uh, the payroll, when uh, you in one of the payroll setups, what you will do in the flex field mapping, you need to uh, specify what is the ledger that you're going to use. So that's how it knows the ledger and uh, it also has a direct mapping with uh, the GL segments uh, that is mapped to the cost allocation segments. So that's how it knows to which account to pass it to. So that's all we had as a part of the introductory session for the payroll processing and uh, do please sign up for the payroll processing live videos there you will also see uh, the full end-to-end -end payroll configuration videos as well uh, we have done this for the US legislation so far and we do plan to uh, uh, expand that towards uh, more legislation so that it helps and not only the consultants working for US legislations but also worldwide so hopefully that was useful and do definitely check us for more videos at www.erpwebtutor.com. Thanks a lot.